In this episode, we'll have a quick look at some of the secondary correction tools in DaVinci Resolve. Secondary correction is when you isolate part of the image and just affect that part of the image. So the example we're going to use here is whitening teeth. Check this out. All right, in this episode, what we're going to look at is kind of doing some of the finishing touches in your color grading, doing secondary correction. And specifically in this case, we'll use the example of whitening teeth. So you can see here in this example, teeth are looking just a little bit yellow. And that can happen for a variety of reasons. Obviously, if your talent has yellow teeth, they're gonna look yellow. Um, but it also can have to do with your lighting as we talked in previous episodes about the quality of different types of light, tungsten versus LED versus fluorescent. Sometimes with the LED and the fluorescent, I find, at least with the less expensive ones, you are gonna get a green cast and a little bit of a yellow cast and potentially also a blue cast. So <laughs> if uh, if you do if you are using one of those, you can sometimes find that the teeth look a little bit more yellow than they actually they do in real life. So this is uh, another thing you can do to kind of offset that a little bit. So what we're gonna do here is I've got just a single node here and I'm gonna go ahead and add another node, but we'll come back to that second node in a minute. So on our primary node, we're gonna do our primary correction. And in this case, we've got this black background that's not looking exactly where we want it. So just like in previous episodes where I showed how I did the primary corrections on this, I wanna take this black background and crush the black so that it is just a pure black background. And then you can see the black background is represented here in the waveform or parade scope. It's these kind of, each of the colors are showing this pedestal here. We wanna get that down below zero. So I'll just take our lift and we'll just roll that down until we get those blacks nice and pure like that. And then I'll just take my gain and I'm gonna bump that up a little bit till my skin tones are about where I want them. And that's gonna be somewhere in the, you know, 900 range is where they're, peak, where they're peaking, but that, that's about right for what we're looking at. Okay, so we're good there. Let's go to our second node here. And I just did that by again, adding, going to node and add a serial node. That's just a second serial node. So we'll get that out of our way so we can see. Now, what I wanna do here is again, take these teeth and let's just whiten those up just a touch, but I don't wanna affect any other part of the image really if I can avoid it. So there are a variety of ways we can do that. And this is just one way. Um, if you know of better ways, certainly let us know, but this is one way you can do that. First, we come into our curves here, and in our curves, we have a variety of options. You, you know, you have the obvious, um, this option here as far as curves, where you get the RGB curves and, and the overall luminance curve, but there are also other options here as well, including soft clip, which we haven't covered yet, maybe in the future. We have our hue versus hue, hue versus saturation, hue versus luminance, and luminance versus saturation. Now today, we're gonna to look specifically at hue versus saturation and hue versus luminance. And the way this works is hue versus satura saturation, you choose a color range, and then for that color range alone, you can e increase or decrease the saturation. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. With, with yellow teeth, typically the issue is that they're a little too saturated, you wanna desaturate them some, and then on the hue versus luminance, what we'll do with this is you can actually, again, in this case, choose a color range and you can increase or decrease the luminance for just that color range. And so what we'll do is we'll select the color range for our teeth and just very slightly increase the luminance just to kind of give it that white overall look. So what we can do here is I can just scroll in and the way I'm doing that, I'm using a mouse with the scroll wheel and, and the scroll wheel just lets you zoom in some. So we're back to our hue versus, versus saturation. And I'll just take the eyedropper up to the teeth and select the area there. And you can see what's happened is as we did that, it put uh, some control points on the curve here and selected just that range. So really we're looking at the kind of orange to yellow range here. And that's exactly what we're seeing in the teeth. So to decrease the saturation for that range, I just pull this down a little bit. Now I can go extreme and you can see the, <laughs> the teeth kind of turn Arctic white. And maybe that's the look you're going for. Um, that's cool if you are, you can go that extreme. I'm not really probably looking for something that quite extreme, just sort of roll the yellow edge off a little bit and we'll probably go in that range there. So it's looking better already. Now, the one thing we have to be careful about is if we're doing this, if we go extreme, we have to make sure that it's not affecting other parts of the image. And, and there are, can be other things in the image that have that same, uh, that fall within that same color range. So if we go extreme, we can see, is it affecting any other part of the image? And the answer is, yes, it is. It's affecting my hair. So we probably don't want to go really extreme or we're gonna to have to do another um, something else to 
prevent it from affecting the hair and just affecting the teeth. So again, I'm not going to go that extreme just so I could show you what it, this looks like if you want to do it really quickly. I'm just going to bump it down a little bit. Then let's move over to our hue versus luminance and let's do a similar thing here. Again, we just want to select the range for the teeth and I just want to increase the luminance just a little bit just to give them a nice white look there. So you know, there, there's one correction you could do that's actually probably more than I really want. I want it to be really pretty subtle. Don't want it to look fake. So there we go. There's one thing we could do. It's not really affecting our hair that much, but if we weren't running into a situation where it was, another thing we can do is use a window to prevent the effect from, a, from affecting any other part of the overall frame. We just want to affect the teeth. So we can just come and bring this window in here We'll increase the feather so that it kind of rolls off as opposed to just being a really hard, hard edged kind of uh, effect or applied in a hard way. So there we go. So the inside of the circle here is where it will affect 100% and then it will roll off and feather off until out here it won't have any effect at all. But the problem is, of course, that your talent is going to be moving. And in this case, I evidently appear to be a fairly animated talker and I move around a lot when I'm talking. So let's watch, um, let's just watch really quickly and see how much I move around. And see my teeth are already, they're outside. So <laughs> clearly we're gonna have to do something to address that. And we don't, rather than going frame by frame, we have something called a tracker. And the tracker will allow us to, at least in a semi-automated sort of way, track those teeth through the course of the entire clip. Now this is getting obviously a little bit more heavy handed and this is typically something I try to avoid if I can, but if you've gotta do it, you gotta do it. And this is an extreme example. So if you can get it to work for teeth on a mouth, on a person that's talking and moving around a fair bit, you can make it work for almost anything else. So let's, let's just quickly walk through how you use the tracker. So what I typically like to do is move it to frame so that if it does get off, I can move it back, correct it, back to the place where I want it to, to be and then have it automatically detect from there. So let me show you what I mean. So if we start from here, um, this is our entire clip here. I'm gonna start from right here and first I wanna go backwards to the start. So I'll just press this left or rewind button and I'll be ready to press the pause button in case it gets uh, sort of out of control and, and starts uh, moving the window off of my teeth and into other areas of the image. It actually did pretty good there. So we're just gonna go ahead and roll with that. That's that's gonna be fine. Let's uh, move it back here and let's pick it up going the other direction. Okay, we can see here it's definitely zoomed in way too much. So we wanna kinda of just move this back, resize it so it's really just affecting the part that I want it to affect, just like that. And then we just press play again. And Again, it's uh, zoomed in a little too much. Bring it back here. There we go. And then we'll keep on going. Okay, pretty good. So we can just test that really quickly here. Not bad. Now. The great thing is now it's not affecting my hair, it's just affecting the teeth, and that's how that works. So there's just one example. Again, this is you know maybe not something you're necessarily gonna do frequently, but it does hopefully highlight how some of these tools are used to do secondary corrections and affect you know, just a certain portion of your overall clip. Hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions or ideas on how you might do this better or more effectively, certainly leave those down below. I don't want to give the impression that I'm an expert here. I'm, I'm learning along with all of you. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do that. We'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk with you soon.